competition so let's just jump right in jump wow you're very eager what are I you am, jumping into i am i am hope hopeful that i'm gonna win today you mean win <laughs> ha a good one <laughs> it is now time for <clears throat> games tracy lost in 2023 so we're gonna play them again so that she can have a rematch a thon what are we doing today now, for today's game we're gonna need some fish the last time whoa the last time we played this game it was actually with um, pumpkin, um, what are they called? What are those candies called? Candy corn? Mm-hmm. Pumpkin. Oh, were candy. they the apple, like the apple ones? Oh, we have apple candy. That's what it was. And we bobbed for the apples. Those were bad. However, we're playing bobbing for fish. What's more fitting than a fish in a bowl of water? Not like the ocean or a lake or a river where they belong. All right, we got. We got our candy fish. Time to swim, fishies. <laughs> Ooh, listen to that. All right, so the point of this game is you can't use your... Okay, you were saying. All right, the point of this game is you can't use your hands, you can't use anything, you just have to use your face to put it in the water, grab the fish, pull them out, set them on the table, etc., etc. Whoever I? gets the most fish, wins. Quin. If you get all your fish first, you win. Okay, can if I? If there are all the fishes out, you win. I'm ready, let me pull my hair back. <laughs> Where'd this water come <laughs> from? Suddenly I remembering that I literally felt like I was gonna drown the last time we did this. This water smells really wet. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the inside of my brain. Ready? Yep. Ready, spaghetti! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my God. What are you doing? <laughs> what? They're so slippery. <laughs> That's a real fish. Oh, this water is deep. <laughs> <laughs> They're so flat against the bottom. Tracy's drowning! Help! <laughs> the ball bubble. Oh, I can't see. Pretty sure this water's a lot cloudier than it was a second. You've got some floaties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have, oh look at that! <laughs> look at that! Uh, I don't right. know. Oh, I can't think. How many? How many did you, you get? You know when you're a kid and you take swim lessons and like your nose just. Okay. Well, well I mean, when I took swim me. lessons, I had to like you. They teach you how to hold your, you know, like not get water in your nose, and it feels like it's burning all the time, and that's what my nose feels like. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got six. How many did you get? Oh my Zero, word! Eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Number two. Double time. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. When okay, church kids. I'm gonna go. I don't even know. Grab a towel. That's usually what you use to dry yourself. Cry. You're all gonna play a game? 
probably bobbing for fish. Probably not, actually. This is kind of gross and yeah. really messy. But anyway, enjoy your time. Goodbye. What's up, church kids? Teacher Chris here for another game. And let me tell you, it's about to be so tight. All right, this is what I like to call the human horseshoe. <laughs> so what I need is I need two per team, all right? So what we're gonna do is we need a tosser and then we need the person who's going to be the human horseshoe. The objective of this game is to get three hula hoops around your partner. Once you get three, you can take a step back from your partner. The person who is the farthest after the 60 seconds wins this competition. All right, and a rule and a suggestion is if you are receiving the hula hoop up and over your body, what you wanna do is you want to cover your face, all right, just like so, so that you do not get hit, no bloody nose, no broken teeth. Not here, not at church, kids. Not gonna happen. Teacher Chris got you. All right, find your person, find your horseshoe, and let's rock and roll. The game begins in three, two, one. Those who hope in the Lord will become strong again But those who hope in the Lord will become strong again They will soar on wings like eagles They will soar on wings like eagles They will run and not grow weak They will walk and not grow tired They will run and not grow weak They will walk and not grow tired Isaiah 40, 31, yeah Building my strength, earning my wings, man, I'm earning my ranks. Praise our God and I give him my thanks. See my sin and they walk in the plank. Christ like setting, we all on 10. With G-O-D, we all gon' win. No matter what you did or where you've been. Love and grace, that's who he is. For those who hope, see, I got hope. Christ, grace and faith alone. God's glory, not my own. Can't switch up when I'm in my zone. We bless, we bless, we bless, we bless. Let be known up in the Northwest. Do it real big and holy steps. Hear me out so you don't forget. For those who hope in the Lord will be strong again but those who hope in the lord will become strong again they will soar on wings like eagles they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weak they will walk and not grow tired they will run and not grow weak they will walk and not grow tired So if I have hope, that means I should be able to be happy all the time, right? Not at all. Oh. Life is hard. There are emotions like fear, anxiety, worry, doubt, anger. We all walk through really hard things. Having hope does not mean that you have to be this happy robot all the time. I am a happy robot. Wow.
Well, that's good yeah, because yeah. sometimes in my life, I believe God has a plan, but that plan is really hard to see and can be discouraging sometimes. I totally understand. Like we talked about last week, we know God's character. We know he is good and he cares about us. So when life seems hard and moving forward seems impossible and like we can't take another step, we can have hope and cling on to God with everything that we have. Our memory verse is Isaiah 40, 31, which says, but those who hope in the Lord will become strong again. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weak. They will walk and not grow tired. See, this verse doesn't say that hard things won't happen in life or that it will be easy, but it does say that when we put our hope in God, we will make it through. Let's take a look at our lesson for today. One, two, three, four. Hey, hey, God, 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 God. God. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And this is our Loop Show Band. Woo! My name's Dominic and I'll be on vocals. This is Jordan, he's on cajon. This is Dave, he's on acoustic guitar. And this is Justin, also on acoustic guitar. Now, we here at the Loop Show believe that hope is fuller when it's shared. So we invited some of our musical friends into the studio because making music together is a great example of a shared experience. Yeah, like one instrument on its own is okay. But when you add a bunch of musical instruments together... Yeah. It's so much fuller! Hey Loop, so I want to encourage you with something today. You see, my guess is that each of you have hopes and dreams for the future, for your future. And maybe some of you even have hopes and dreams for somebody else's future. I mean, if you've ever asked the question, how can I help you? Then you probably have some kind of hope for somebody else's future. You wanna help them, you wanna serve them. And it's great that we're asking that question. But I bet even on top of that, you have hopes for things that you wanna see done in your own life, maybe goals you wanna accomplish. Now, you could probably look at really successful people and say, well, they accomplish significant goals. I mean, they ran a huge company or they keep winning championships, whatever it may be for them. And you may also look at that and say, well, they keep winning championships, because they're a freakishly good athlete, right? Like, and, and that makes that makes sense. Or they have a great business because they're super smart and they hired all the right people and had a little bit of luck, right? Like, I mean, I mean, there could be things like that, and that's a part of the equation. But I'll tell you another really important part of the equation: people that have crazy success like that and get incredible things done. There's something else they do that's a little bit different than the rest of us. You see, when I started talking about your hopes and dreams that you have for your own life or for someone else's, you probably had some things start rolling through your head. But I bet there were also some of those things rolling through your head that you've never shared with anyone else. And if that's the case, then right now you have singular hope. You have just a hope that you alone are able to influence. But if you will do what a lot of those successful people do and share that hope and share that vision with the people around you, your friends, your family. You then have collective hope, where together, you can come together and everybody in that circle is able to influence that vision or that hope. You see, for you, it may be that you and your friends are gonna start having each other's backs at school. Maybe you know there's a lot of negative influences in your life, and there's a lot of opportunities for negative uh, words to be spoken into you guys, and, and you've just decided that as a group of friends, we're gonna shield each other from that. We're gonna make sure that nobody is speaking negativity into our life. We have each other's back. You may decide, hey, I'm a part of a sports team and we are gonna be the best and we're gonna win the championship. So you get with your team and you say, guys, we have to practice harder than everybody else. We have to work more than everybody else because we're going to win. You see, if you just decide to do that by yourself, it's probably not enough to make the difference. But if you decide to turn your hope into collective hope, then you could see some spectacular things happen in your life. We love a good song here on The Loop Show. Especially one with a cool summer vibe. Yes, yep, agreed. Yes, a good summer song is one that's chill enough to play by the pool or high energy enough to entertain at a barbecue. And it has to have a memorable melody. And catchy lyrics, which you can make up on your own or leave it up to predicted text. Flawless segue, <laughs> we are going to be doing the predictive text summer jam challenge. 
we are going to use a prompt that is going to be typed into our phones and we are going to use the predictive text feature to finish writing these lyrics and get ready to have your mind blown because this is going to be the best summer jam ever written. <laughs> are you ready? Yes. Ready. This summer, comma, we're gonna... Uh, this summer we're gonna be doing a little better, <laughs> which is true because I like the summertime much more than I, like the winter time. <laughs> absolutely. What do you have? We got. We're gonna have a good Thanksgiving. Oh, that's you know nice. What? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Just have it in the summer. I think that's great. Great idea. Yeah. Uh, I have this summer. We're gonna have fun with you. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. With you, Loopsters. Yeah. We can hang out at. We can hang out at church. I got church. Around. I got church too. <laughs> it's unanimous. We're hanging out at church. <laughs> My lyrics ended up being, we hang out at church tomorrow. But if you need anything else. Oh, you have to finish it. Let me know. That's great. Thanks. <laughs> Prayer emoji. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> How pretty is. There it goes. Our next prompt is, all of our friends are. All of our friends are coming in today. Oh, maybe they're all carpooled. That'd be great. Every sunny day. Ooh, I like it. Mine says every sunny day is here. My, oh, my, nice. my predictive text is not very creative. All, all of our <laughs> friends are here. Every sunny day is here. here. <laughs> I got every sunny day is here and we will have a good time. Ooh, Ooh. I like it. That might That's be the winner. Great. Do a cannonball into the... Do a cannonball into the park with you. Okay. That's Simple. nice. Yeah, okay. Like Next one is take me to Ooh. the... Take me to the gym, then go back home to work on my phone. <laughs> I've got things to do today. It's a, it's a summer day, but, like, I've got things in my calendar. Yeah. I like it. All right. Final uh, prompt is catch some rays. I'll start looking for the next week. <laughs> I mean, not every line is a winner. How funny, I got catch some rays and then send them back. <laughs> Interesting. That's nice. I feel like it's like sending positivity into hey, the world. Yes. Yeah. Catch some rays and <laughs> send them right back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we have our lyrics and we're going to work with the band to undoubtedly write the greatest summer song you've ever heard. You're not gonna wanna miss it. The life of Jesus was like a bullhorn shouting from heaven that there is hope for everyone. No one is excluded from the beautiful future that God has in store for the world. Now, real quick, I want you to think of your favorite dessert of all time. Don't tell anybody about it yet, just think about it. Maybe it's your grandma's pie or your friend's cookies. Whatever it is, nothing else measures up. Everyone under the sun needs to try it in your opinion. Now for me, that dessert is this cinnamon bread from a pizza shop. I have no idea why, but it is quite literally incredible to me. Maybe it's the perfect cinnamon to icing ratio, and when it comes fresh out of the oven, there is nothing like it. It is incredible. You should definitely try it sometime if you can. Anyway, I want you to think about that dessert and imagine how incredible it is, but you can't tell anyone about it. You have to keep it to yourself. Now, how painful would that be? Because when we're excited about something, when something's great, we wanna share it with those around us. And while dessert is great, the hope of Jesus is so much better. And when we allow the hope of Jesus to work in and through our heart, it's gonna overflow into everything that we do, into every interaction that we have. Maybe it's the way that you tell your parents that you appreciate them. Or maybe it's the way that you can just smile at someone and make them feel like they're welcome. Maybe it's you inviting someone to sit with you at your table that you've never sat with before. Whatever it is, maybe it seems small, but they provide small glimpses of hope to the people around us. And when people see that hope, they're gonna notice something's different about us and they're gonna want that hope too. And when we're excited about something, like the way that Jesus works in our life, the love he's shown us, the grace he's shown us, we wanna share that with others too. In 1923, a song called Faithfulness was written by poet Thomas Chisholm and composer William Marion Runyon. Unlike other popular church songs, the story behind this one isn't painfully tragic. The author said he wrote it after looking back and realizing he could see God keeping promises in his life. 
he was filled with an astonishing gratefulness for God's unfailing care, even on ordinary days. And you can find this idea throughout the lyrics. From the first verse declaring, as thou hast been, thou forever will be, which is saying, God, you never change and you never will. And in the chorus that claims morning by morning, which means every single day, all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. God, you give me absolutely everything I need. Mr. Chisholm wrote over 1,200 poems and valued using scripture as much as possible in his poetry, which makes sense here since the title and main refrain of this song come directly from a biblical poem that we find in an Old Testament book called Lamentations. While Mr. Chisholm's story is not tragic, the poems of Lamentations are full of pain, confusion, and grief. There are poems by an anonymous author that cry out to God in the face of catastrophe and loss. But as the author is processing these emotions in verse 21 of chapter 3, a hopeful twist appears. It reads, But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Smuggled into these poems on suffering are these bright words of hope. Mr. Chisholm takes that hope and amplifies it. He says in every day, good or bad, God's nature stays the same. He starts a list of God's incredible qualities in verse 3. God is forgiving, pardon for sin. God is peaceful, peace that endureth. God is joyfully present in our lives, thine own dear presence to cheer. God guides and to guide. God gives us strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. And it doesn't stop there with 10,000 beside. When we sing this song together, we're saying, God, you are faithful to us. Your love never fails. Together we sing out, God, you provide all I need. You are in control. Together, we sing out, God will follow you morning by morning, day by day with astonishing gratefulness. I have hope. You are faithful. A verse that gives me this hope. A verse, that gives, that, gives a verse me hope. that gives me hope. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. This verse gives me hope because it's like God is offering to me this gift that I just get to accept confident hope and peace. Amidst the, the chaos of the world and whatever else, it's like, it's almost like it sounds too good to be true. This what's being offered to me after trusting in him, you know? A prayer of hope. A prayer of hope. A prayer of hope. A prayer, a prayer of, of hope. hope. My best hope is in you, God. It's not something to keep to myself. My future is yours, so lead me to life with others. No matter what circumstances come my way, I will share my hope. I will share my hope. I hold firmly to the hope I claim in you. I hold firmly to the hope I claim in you. I hold firmly to the hope I claim in you. 
Every day is a new opportunity for you to look around and see who needs hope. Morning by morning, God shares hope with us. He is faithful. And when hope is shared, his kingdom grows. And life is fuller. It's so great having the band join us today. Yes! Thank you guys so much. <laughs> and we're going to need your help with signing off. Mm -hmm. So normally we say, enjoy the ride. But this time, we are going to see what predictive text says we should say. So I'm going to type in, enjoy the... Okay, we have sun, park, and day. You want to go with park? That's yes? Great. Okay, awesome. One, two, three. Enjoy, enjoy the, the park. park! God is faithful. And we can always put our hope in that. Let's pray. God, thank you that you are a good God, that we can rely and depend on your faithfulness. We are so thankful for your faithfulness. Remember, church kids, putting your hope in God doesn't mean you have to be happy all the time. Life is hard, and it's okay to be honest about your struggles. That's right. But we will put our trust in God and cling to him as we walk through life because his character is good, and he loves us. We will see you next week. And remember, it's a great day to be a church kid! Church kids, in case you didn't know, we wanted to tell you that Jesus loves you. Yes, you. And he loves you so much that he died on the cross for your sins so that we could have salvation, which means we are in right standing with God. When we ask Jesus into our heart to be the leader and Lord of our life, we no longer have to walk in fear or in shame because when God sees us, he sees the righteousness of his son, Jesus. Salvation is a free gift to anyone who says yes to Jesus. In fact, in Romans 10, 9, it says this, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if today you want to make the decision to make Jesus the leader and Lord of your life, now is your moment. Are you ready? As a sign of support, let's all pray this together. Lord Jesus, Welcome to my world. I ask you to come into my heart and to forgive me of all of my sins. I decide today to follow you and to make you the leader and Lord of my life. I believe it, I receive it, and I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we are so excited for you. Make sure to tell a church kids leader so we can celebrate with you and give you next steps.